Thank you. I dug this picture out of the archives. I don't know, is Eddie here? Eddie's right here. So T this is TJ, one of our other colleagues at Progress. Um, this is from Telerik Next. So this is way back in the day in Boston. But I uh, just want to throw some love Eddie's way. Uh, so to remind you all again, my name is Rob Lauer. I manage the mobility DevRel team at Progress, of which, of course, Sebastian is a member, and Jen as well. Um, you can, of course, validate my existence by following me on Twitter at Rob Lauer, should you so choose. And I will keep this as short and sweet as possible because I know we're all hungry. Uh, first off, what is up with this company, Progress? Well, as I hope you know by now, we are one of the main sponsors of this event, and more importantly, the main company behind NativeScript. What you may not know is that Progress is a pretty big global company, and we've been around for 30 some odd years now, and recently becoming very focused on developer tooling and developer productivity, especially when it comes to mobility. Uh, but a question that we get all the time actually is, why does Progress support NativeScript? It's a really great question because supporting NativeScript is incredibly expensive, as you can imagine. There's a huge engineering team, there's those of us on DevRel, there's marketing, and so on and so on. Um, and you can kind of compare the situation to like a Facebook or a Google, right? They have their own mobile frameworks that are awesome, uh, but they have you know, quite a bit more revenue coming in than progress. They're a lot bigger than us. So what do we have to do with NativeScript? Well, one way we monetize NativeScript is through enterprise support. Now, this is not something that we really actively promote. Uh, it's a great offering for those of us, uh, those of our customers who are really need that uh, top priority support. They need to have somebody backing their framework directly. Um, but it's not really scalable, right? It's not something that we're not basing our future on enterprise support. Uh, what we can do, though, is leverage NativeScript internally to build developer productivity tooling to make all of our lives easier. Uh, so we have NativeScript, obviously, for native mobility. You may not know that Progress is also the company behind Kendo UI, which is a very robust set of UI widgets for Angular, React, Vue, and jQuery, believe it or not. Um, and as of about two years ago now, we are also the company behind Kinvey. Now, you may have heard us talking about Kinvey off and on. Uh, Kinvey is a serverless platform built for enterprises, uh, runs on AWS, uh, really meant for uh, rapidly scaling and building robust applications, mobile applications. Now, no blasphemy intended here, but progress is really becoming this holy trinity, if you will, of handling cross-platform mobile app development along with web with a robust backend, really all supporting virtually any app on any screen. So progress in this way is really primed to support today's enterprise developers, which includes many of us, um, as we're confronted kind of with these common scenarios, right? Our app needs are increasing. We're building more and more apps. And I don't care if it's web or mobile or wearable, we're building more. Uh, the resources we have to build these apps are either flat or decreasing relative to this new workload. We have legacy apps to maintain and we keep adding onto that pile. Uh, apps themselves are increasing in complexity as well. What I mean by that is that even today's definition of what an app is is changing. What used to be either web or maybe desktop is now native iOS, native Android, responsive web, maybe PWA, or even chat or a wearable app, right? So again, we're building more apps, more complicated apps in less time while supporting these legacy apps. So how about leveraging new tooling to help solve this problem? And I'm sure you may see where I'm going here. So I'm going to introduce you to Kinvey Studio, which is a key part of this broader progress Kinvey platform. Kinvey Studio is going to enable us to create apps for multiple platforms from a shared JavaScript code base. And this includes, obviously, iOS and Android from NativeScript, web, and even chat. Kinvey Studio is focused on low code. Now, don't be scared by this. This does mean code generation, which I know we all have uh, horrible fears of. But unlike other code generation tools, the code generated by Kinvey Studio is pretty, and I would even say developer approved. We are building on top of existing open source frameworks like NativeScript, like Angular, like Kendo UI. And at no point do we ever lock you into this tool. You're free to come and go as needed. You can really, you can start in Kinvey Studio. You can go to Visual Studio Code. You can go back to Kinvey Studio as needed. Uh, and the back end is, of course, built on this performant Kinvey platform all running on AWS. So instead of talking for my whole time, I'm going to probably make a huge mistake and do a live demo. 
Uh, let's see if I can head over here. Uh, so this is Kinmei Studio. Now, uh, I'm going to caution you, this is a brand new product. It's still in beta. It's still being actively developed. Uh, and what I've done here is I've already initialized an app. But I'm going to show you that, the Create App screen really quickly here, because there's some important aspects to show off. When I'm starting an app, I, of course, just want to add an app name. Uh, importantly here is the location of the files. Now, I mentioned there's no lock-in. So when you initialize an app with Kinvey Studio, everything's stored in your local file system. That means you have full access to these files. We're not sending them, sending them to the cloud. There's nothing proprietary with these files, aside from some additional metadata that we provide. Now, one thing I don't want you to be afraid of here is the Kinvey backend section. Let me clarify this. When you add, create an app with Kinvey Studio, you associate it with data. That data is, does not have to be Kinvey data. Now, with Kinvey, you, of course, can uh, use it as a traditional backend as a service, right? You can have data stored in Kinvey and Kinvey collections. A big part of what our customers use, though, are our data connectors. So using Kinvey, you can connect to uh, on-prem legacy data stores, you know, SQL Server, Oracle, MySQL. You can connect to cloud data stores like Salesforce and SAP. You can do a combination of all those. You can leverage our cloud caching and offline access by default. I'm going to go off, I'm going off on a tangent, but just so you know, don't let the whole Kinvey thing scare you here. You can use your existing data. Uh, so what I've done here is I've initialized an app, and what I've done is created a new web view, and I just threw a grid on this view. And now this grid, is associated with uh, what I have, a, a claims collection. So I'm pretending I'm an auto insurance uh, adjuster, if you will, and I want to see some auto insurance claims. That's all I've done. It took me, honestly, about 30 seconds. So what that did is it gave me this, uh, this grid. Now, is this the most beautiful, amazing app you've ever seen in your life? No, but honestly, it took me 30 seconds to go from nothing to a, uh, a web form with this grid, the KenDUI grid, accessing real data. So it's pretty cool. Now, I think that we can go in and make this a little bit better. And let me add a new view here. I'm going to add a blank view, because the blank view lets me really customize this. I'm going to make this a chart. And on this chart, you see I have all these UI widgets I can choose from. So you can drag and drop your way to any kind of interface that you can imagine. In the interest of time, I'm going to keep this as simple as possible, and I'm going to associate this view with a data source, and that data source is going to be a type of my insurance claim. And my pie chart itself is going to be associated with certain fields from that data source. I can barely talk and use the keyboard at the same time. So, uh, the fact that I'm even talking right now is crazy. Uh, let's save that. So once I save this, should everything work correctly? And my Wi-Fi is still with me. Uh, my, yeah, my browser will reload automatically. And I will see on the left here a, uh, a chart view. I'm going to blame Wi-Fi. No, no, there it is. So here's my chart view. Okay, again, very simple. Is this the most shocking demo you've ever seen in your life? No, but again, it was a matter of a few points and clicks, and I got my data. Now, this gets more interesting for me when we start talking about mobility, because here's where NativeScript comes into play. So I can switch over here, and I have a variety of mobile views I can choose from. So I'm going to choose this list view, and I'm just going to call it uh, mobile list view, because I'm very creative. My mobile list view is going to be associated with my claims data. And you see here, this is one example of kind of this no-code uh, solution with Kinvey Studio where I can choose to enable offline data support by default. There's no coding required. Uh, it's pretty cool, actually. And let's see, in the title here, I'm going to be do the vehicle, and I'm going to have the person's name under that. And the image is just going to be the image from the collection. And I'm going to generate here as well. And I already forgot to do one thing. Uh, with Kinvey Studio, you can fully manage the navigation of both your web and uh, mobile app. And I'm skipping over a lot here in the interest of time here, but I'm going to basically add that view I just created to my tab view. And where am I going here? I want to show this. There we go. Uh, so here's this really basic app that I quite literally just created. Navigate to my list view here. You know, here's a 
native list pulling in uh, images online all works just fine. Now, this gets slightly more powerful here if I navigate back and I want to I want to add another view here, but I want to create a master detail view based on this. So I'm going to just what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a form based on that collection data. So just that one gear icon to create in a form here uh, gave me this new view, which I can, I can go through and customize this further. And all I have to do on the original view is choose that view to navigate to. So what this is saying, if you can't read the text, is select a view to navigate to when an item in the list is tapped. So I did that. I'm going to save my changes. And we'll watch my... This is using the same NativeScript preview app that you've all probably been using. And I can go to my list view and tap on there. And so I get a form. I get an editable form right there. Um, I can get a lot crazier than this. There's the capability of adding a blank view. So you can create a blank view. You can drag and drop uh, controls on here as needed, uh, including with a, you can use grid or stack layouts. Let me just show that really quickly. So I can drop a stack layout on here. I can start throwing like an um, image on there and all that kind of good stuff. So kind of what you expect from drag and drop. This interface that you see right now, actually I think it's pretty ugly. But it's going to improve dramatically in the, in the coming days and weeks. Um, and the other, the one last thing I want to show in the app, actually two more things. Uh, let's not save. Um, the, uh, again, I mentioned the ability to create a, a chat view. So this uh, Kinvay Studio integrates directly with Kinvay Chat, which is a really, really awesome uh, new way of creating chatbots for web and mobile. In fact, Sebastian has a fantastic tutorial that he just wrote on using Kinvay Chat, really well worth taking a look at. Uh, finally, you can theme your app through Kinvay Studio. We offer a variety of pre-built themes. You can customize yours online as well. And there's a variety of deployment options, which I'm sure you can barely read up there. But for the web, you can build your app here for deployment. You can even push it to Kinvay Cloud Hosting, which is all hosted on AWS, very performant. On mobile, you can build that app package locally. You can publish it to the stores. If I were on Windows, of course, I could build for iOS, publish to the iOS App Store, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, and just to summarize here, so the key takeaway really here is that Kinvay Studio is going to help us make, more produ make us more productive as developers. It's not going to get you all the way to creating an app, but it's going to get you the vast majority of the way, get you kind of up and bootstrapped really quickly. So we are creating multiple apps, uh, including PWA, I didn't really talk about that at all, uh, and chat from shared data, shared JavaScript code, built with Angular. Uh, I didn't have time to show this, but we do get complete separation of responsibilities in terms of your front end, uh, design, or front end developers, back end developers, and designers. Uh, we're, of course, taking advantage of that mature serverless back end provided by Kinvay. Uh, we can also extend that app functionality with open source plugins. We can use our existing CI tools, uh, VS Code, GitHub, Appium, you name it. Uh, if you want to try the beta version of Kinvay Studio, you can find it at uh, progress.com slash Kinvay slash studio. That's it. Let's go to lunch.